Wisconsin University. I finished my PhD just last month and I'm super excited to be joining Facebook Reality Labs in Redmond, Washington. Today I'm so disappointed that I cannot be there in person because of a visa issue, but at the same time, I'm happy to be able to present to you all our design tool that can enable people without any background in engineering to create custom electromechanical devices with digital fabrication. Our goal is to enable people to create their own smart devices such as these. The first example is called Chirpy and it's a smart crib monitor meant to entertain crying babies. Next we have a can recycling robot here that we call Crusher and both these devices were created with our design tool that I am going to talk about today. With the availability of digital fabrication technologies such as 3D printing and laser cutting and affordable electronics such as Arduino, Raspberry Pi, etc. People now have the means to build their own personalized smart devices. There is also a lot of 3D content available online for customization. However, while hardware and manufacturing technologies are becoming available, what is still missing are software design tools that can enable people to define and design devices based on their needs and preferences. Such design tools are highly essential because the process of creating smart devices requires a lot of domain knowledge and skills. Unfortunately, most of the existing design tools such as SOLIDWORKS, Inventor, etc. are created with experts in mind. This means that they are really complex and have a long learning curve. Design tools for non-experts such as Tinkercad, 123D Design, etc. have also been developed. However, these tools inherently make it easy for people to create static 3D objects, but they provide limited support for designing 3D objects with integrated components. So what does the design process of creating 3D objects with integrated components look like? Let's see an example. Say you want to make a quad rotor. The process of designing one in SOLIDWORKS would look something like this. You would have to create detailed engineering sketches based on the dimensions of components, and then you would convert these sketches into relevant 3D geometries. While making these sketches, you will also have to account for dimensions of fasteners, keep space for wires, consider fabrication tolerances, and so on. And then you'll have to repeat this process for each and every component in your device. Once you have a design, you will fabricate, assemble, and test it in the real world. However, as is most often the case, you find that some things worked, but some things didn't. And so, you'll have to go back again and repeat this process. The current design process is thus not only knowledge and skill intensive, and involves the use of complex tools, but it is also tedious, long, prone to failures, and iterative. These iterations further take place on hardware, which means that they are also monetarily expensive. All in all, there is a large entry barrier for casual users who might be interested in making smart devices with digital fabrication. To make this process easier, we developed an easy-to-use computational tool that models relevant design aspects and encodes necessary domain knowledge. Our tool enables user-in-the-loop design, wherein the users can not only define what they would need or prefer, but they can also get relevant feedback about their design from the tool so as to prevent design failures. At the same time, our tool automates tedious design steps so that users can focus on the creative parts of the design. Let's now think about the various steps of designing electromechanical devices in more detail. Electromechanical devices typically consist of an enclosure that houses various components such as sensors, controller, battery, etc. For aesthetic purposes, the enclosures could be of any shape and size and most of the components are bounded or hidden within the enclosure. There are many examples of such devices out there. To design such devices, one has to take many steps. For instance, one has to figure out the layout of components so that everything would fit within the given volume of the enclosure. One also has to design detailed mounting structure geometries and fastener geometries to hold each and every component properly so that the components would function as required. For example, say you have a motor in your device that is driving a wheel. 
you don't want the motor to shake when it is doing this so you would really have to hold the motor properly in your device with brackets and fasteners finally one has to think about how to put everything together or in other words about the assembly of components unfortunately these steps cannot be done one after another and one has to really think about them concurrently this is because say you came up with a layout of components for your device without accounting for the assembly of components at assembly time you might find that you have not left in your space to insert a screw driver to fasten a screw so now you'll have to recreate your design to fix this issue and repeat the whole process this concurrency in the design process really makes it challenging for casual users apart from that there are other challenges that i mentioned before such as being tedious skill intensive and prone to failures our assembly aware layout design system makes this easier by taking care of all the necessary design steps simultaneously it does allows users to convert a desired 3d enclosure and set of electromechanical components into a functional fabricated prototype in almost nil hardware iterations let's now look at our system in action this is how our interface looks it is very visual to be easy to use in the center we have the workspace where users uh, create their devices while on the right we have a library of components various options for exporting and saving the design animating the assembly process etc are available in the menu bar on the left a typical design session begins with users loading their desired device enclosure in the workspace and dragging and dropping components from the library Whenever a component is added in the workspace, easy to use 3D translation and rotation widgets appear on the component which can be used by the users to configure the component manually if needed. Users might want to manually configure certain comp com components based on the functional or aesthetic requirements of the device. Whenever a component is added in the workspace, our system also automatically adds necessary fasteners and creates relevant mounting structure geometries. further our system highlights components that lead to invisible design in red these are the components that might be overlapping with each other or blocking the assembly of other components then to find a valid design all the user has to do is click button optimize and our system uses an automatic process to find a valid layout for each component as well as a, a corresponding assembly plan i'll talk about the optimization in more detail in a minute so the user doesn't really have to manually configure each and every component in the device and can take advantage of our automatic uh, uh design method this is the final optimized design which can be exported for 3d printing from within our system when this export is done our system integrates necessary mounting structure uh, geometries and fastener geometries in the original enclosure geometry so that it can be 3d printed in one piece then all the user has to do is to buy components and put everything together to get a functional device our system also provides an animation to guide the user through the actual assembly process so you are seeing that animation right now and as can be seen in the animation our system accounts for the assembly of fasteners uh during the assembly process so now the user will not end up in a situation where they don't have enough space to insert fasteners or the necessary tools for it We are also inspired by other researchers who have developed approaches to enable the design of 3D printed devices with sensors and actuators. Complementary to our approach is the print and place approach of voxel aid. While this approach has its own advantages, it does not allow for repair and replacement of components. Assembly based design approaches such as ours as well as corresponding design tools for the same have also been developed previously. While many of these tools take care of creating mounting structure and fastener geometries or provide intuitive design through a visual or tangible input interface the burden of deciding component layout is on the users unlike in our system and as we saw this process is very concurrent tedious and time consuming so how does our system work under the hood we have a spatio temporal model of the device layout and assembly the 3d layout of each component is represented by a 3d position and orientation while the temporal assembly plan consists of the order in which each component will be inserted in the device as well as the path along which each component will be inserted this temporal aspect of our problem makes it really unique from other uh, layout problems out there such as document or website layout building layout by merrill and colleagues and virtual furniture layout by uatr 
In order to model or account uh, for this temporal aspect, we also use design for assembly guidelines from experts, such as use of simple assembly paths, allowing for assembly of only one component at a time, etc., so as to ensure that the final design and the overall process is really friendly to casual users. Apart from the layout and assembly parameters, we also model the space needed by components in layout using shape primitives such as a set of locally defined bounding boxes. Such a set of bounding boxes for the motor component is shown in the picture there. Then to model the space needed by components at assembly time, we sweep the components shape primitives along the components assembly path and construct a convex hull. We call the resultant shape as swept shape and swept shape for the motor component is shown as the blue shaded region in the picture up there. The shapes and the swept shapes now allow us to define a valid device design easily only in terms of distances between these shapes. This was really our great insight into the problem. In other words, a valid design is the one where no shapes and swept shapes intersect or overlap with each other at any point in the assembly. Based on this, we can also define a very intuitive and geometric uh, penalty function, uh, which we call overlap penalty function, which penalizes negative distances when shapes intersect or overlap with each other. So it has a quadratic cost when this happens, and the cost gradually decreases uh, as shapes move apart from each other. Given this overlap penalty function, we can now define an overall optimization cost function for finding valid layout and assembly of a device D. This cost function JD consists of two cost terms, a bounding cost term and a co collision cost term, both of which are defined based on the overlap penalty function. The bounding cost term ensures that all the components are bounded within the enclosure, while the col collision cost term computes overlaps between the swept shape of each assembling component in the order of assembly denoted by I and other components in the device that have been previously assembled. This ensures that the assembly process and the final layout is free of any collisions. Given this cost function, to find assembly and layout parameters of all components, we develop an incremental search strategy. Note that while most of our parameters such as layout parameters are continuous, some of our parameters such as the assembly order is discrete in nature. Our incremental search strategy simultaneously searches layout and assembly parameters of each component one by one starting with the biggest component first. For example, to design this, uh, this car, our search strategy will first find the layout and assembly parameters of the biggest component, which is controller board in this case. Then, given the configuration of the controller board, our search strategy will move on to find assembly and layout parameters of the next biggest component, which is battery in this case, and so on. This incremental search strategy is inspired by how people design such devices and was really our second insight into the problem. Then, to perform this search in the really high dimensional space of parameters, we further develop a stochastic optimization method that combines smart sampling with radiant descent. Such a combination was necessary to deal with the discrete and continuous nature of our parameters, as well as to converge onto local minima of our cost function that corresponded to valid designs quickly. In particular, we used Mar Mon Marco Chain Monte Carlo MCMC-based sampling uh, with radiant descent within our system. Please look at the paper for more details. Using our system, we fabricated three devices. We already saw cr Crusher and Chirpy in action before, and the third one is called a balancing robot that can balance on two wheels. Then, to estimate the challenges that people face in designing these devices manually, as well as to validate the need for an automatic uh, design approach, we conducted a user study with novice users who didn't know CAD. Since our participants didn't know computer-aided design or corresponding tools, we asked them to design these three devices using our tool, but without the optimization support. Here are the statistics from the study shown in orange for 24 participants, compared to those of the optimization in gray. Since the process is time consuming, uh, we used average design time as one of the measures of our study. Further, to measure the challenges of the design process, the second measure that we used was the success rate. We found that uh, for some of our devices, such as the balancing robot, only 40% of the participants succeeded in finding a valid design in the allotted time of 45 minutes. Using optimization, on the other hand, increase the probability of finding valid design in the allotted time as well as reduce the average design time to less than 5 minutes. 
Note that our optimization also gets stuck sometimes in a bad local minima, as can be seen again for the balancing robot case. But when this happens, our system asks the users to part of the design and rerun the optimization. Such a rerun or restart allows the optimization to escape the bad local minima it is stuck in and find a valid device design. Rerunning the optimization multiple times in such a manner is still better than asking uh, novice users to design such devices manually. Finally, here are some more examples that show that our system works with various types of enclosures beyond cuboidal enclosures and with large number of components. Please see our paper for more details. So in a nutshell, we developed a design tool uh, that, uh, uh, that makes it easier for casual users to design smart 3D printed devices. To do this, we encoded the necessary domain knowledge using a spatiotemporal model. Our system allowed both manual and automatic design of such devices. Uh, and further, it also automated tedious design steps such as creation of bounding structures and integration of fasteners. Finally, our system provided feedback about design feasibility to the users to prevent uh, design failures, as well as supported uh, um, actual assembly process through necessary animations. With that, I can take questions. Right, so since the conferences and PC meeting and so on, we are trying to go virtual, so I will actually try to get her back on Skype one more time, just for testing. And then maybe we can have like one question for her if I can manage to get her back. Let's see. Can we get her back on the projection? Like this. All right, we have one question from Jan Borchers. Great. Okay. Oh, uh, great floating head in the sky. I have a question. <laughs> um, so, can you tell me how connecting parts in your assembly works? It's always tricky to, you know, wire together parts of your assembly after you've put everything into your enclosure or wire it up and then assemble it, cut wires to the right length. So I'd like to learn more about connectors and maybe Stephanie needs to type something in if you can't hear me. I think what I understood from Jan is like uh, connectors. We didn't really see like wires or connectors between parts, and how would that work? Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we did not model uh, routing of wires really, but we assume that wires are flexible and will be available in long enough lengths to deal with it. Um, what we do model is where the sockets are, and we have special sh shape primitives for them. So the system will ensure that uh, the sockets are not blocked at any point in the time. Uh, the assembly, during the assembly, you can either insert wires after each part is inserted or uh, later, um, you know, after putting everything together. Um, sometimes that gets cumbersome, but for uh, most of our designs, um, it worked out. Uh, it's definitely one of the future works to uh, have a better way to handle wires. All right, so I know Ruta very well. She's an amazing researcher. I've talked to her many times at conferences, and she got up here at like 3 a.m. in the morning to make it here virtually. So let's give Ruta a big hand of applause, and I'm just going to...